What matters most to you? That's a funny question to get asked casually on YouTube when you are scrolling through those many different videos, but it's an important one. And if you find this channel, take a moment. If you're just scrolling around, you have to save it to watch later and come back to it because we want to do another exercise from this book, The Happiness Trap, that describes acceptance and commitment therapy. And in one of these chapters, we are encouraged to think about our values because if we want to experience life as full, rich and meaningful, we have to define our goals and values. We have to define the what and the why. So take a few moments, might be 15 minutes, sit down, take some pen and paper, it would be best or you use the Notion template you find here, or better, you use both pen and paper, and then you write it down in the Notion template and go through these few questions that will help you define the goals and aspirations. And listen to me, the most important thing you have to make sure in doing this exercise is you are truthful. No one else is reading what you are writing and you shouldn't let your ego deceive you because that's what oftentimes what's happening. We write down what our aspiration is, not the reality. We tend to see us much nicer than we are, although we actually know that we are hiding something, that we are not quite as we would like to be. So be truthful with yourself. Don't let your ego deceive you and write down what is deeply important to you. What is deeply important to you? Write it down, maybe it's an aspiration and maybe it's the reality. What does the reality say about you? What is important to you? Number two, what sort of person do you want to be? I think this is a very interesting question, especially if you answer it in third person. Write about yourself in third person. About me, I could say Peter is someone who likes to eat. I don't tell you what I would like to eat, but I'm just saying Peter is a person who wants to read but doesn't do it enough and so on. Be honest, look in the mirror and write about the person you see there. What sort of relationships do you want to build? Now don't be mistaken, having good, meaningful and deep relationships is a cornerstone of every life. We all have to work on this. So what sort of relationships do you want to have? I'm sure no one would write, I don't want to have any good relationships. I don't want to deceive anyone as much as possible, disappoint them. No. What sort of relationships do you want to live? Do you want to have? If you are struggling with feelings and avoiding fears, what would you channel your time and energy into doing? And I know this question might be hard because sometimes we have the feeling we don't want to do anything. There is nothing we really strive towards, we are really dreaming about. But still, take a moment. Maybe there are short-term things you would like to do and those short-term things would lead you, after achieving them, to longer-term goals. I don't know. Maybe there is a big dream you have and you weren't brave enough to take on that adventure. And after you finish answering these few questions, take a moment and put a calendar reminder so you come back to this exercise after at least seven days. Because you will see after seven days you totally forgot what you wrote here. And when you reread it, it will be maybe mind-blowing, maybe a surprise, maybe it reinforces what you said seven days ago. Make sure you repeat this exercise after at least seven days or longer. Now remember, when we live our lives guided by values and guiding principles, we experience it as full, as meaningful, even when it's difficult, even when it's hard. You see, goals, are different than values. Goals are finite. Values might have goals, but goals don't have values. 
if you put some goals, you finish and then what? But guiding principles help you make decisions, have a general direction in your life. If you achieve the dream of living according to your values, that's something. Maybe that's a life's purpose, to define values and live according to them no matter what. And that's hard. That's hard to remember in the middle of a difficult situation what the value is here think about next time when you think oh i will be late they will wait for me is that the value of yours maybe you value time maybe you value your time and the time of others you would not be late when you think about the next lie you will tell to your spouse is that something you really would do is that something you are doing lying I don't know, maybe it is, maybe not, I don't know. Whatever it is, define them, even if it's a value, define it. We are not here to judge, we are here to observe it. Define your values. There is a nice quote at the end of this chapter that says, the past does not exist, it's just memories in the present, and the future does not exist, it's just images and thoughts in the present. The present is the important part of everything, we live in the present and being mindful that we are not poisoned by the past nor influenced by the possible future is important. Thanks for watching, hope this exercise was helpful, see you next time when we go through another exercise from this book, then I'll give you some few examples of a lot of different values you could choose to live by. See you.